Hey, a pleasant good afternoon, everybody. This is Sportsnet News. I'm Doug Warwick, and this is going to be our next division projections video where, again, I will say it again, the first few games of the season don't affect where I'm projecting the division for a whole 162 um, game season. But let's get right into it. Is this going to be the AL East edition? I'll be doing the NL East either later today or tomorrow as I'm mixing in hockey videos and other videos as well into the channel today. Um, as well as some basketball play-in videos. Don't talk about basketball on the channel, but definitely going to take advantage of it for the play-in tournament. But let's get right into it as we're going to start with the last place team, the odd man out team, as I think this division is four deep in potential teams to make it, and it's going to be kind of who's the odd man out fourth that might be the only team um, of the top four not to make the postseason. But the Orioles are the last place team. They're obviously in a full rebuild. They got the Mount Castles of the world that are fun to watch. They got the John Means that are fun to watch. Austin Hayes is an underrated commodity. But they're not a good team. So uh, that's just the best way to put it. Um, they're a team that is clearly the last place team in the division. And then when we move on, this is going to piss a lot of people off. Um... I think the top four of the division is going to be so close that, honestly, whoever's in fourth, it's not like they're going to suck. They're going to be better than probably some teams in other divisions that are in third. But I think this division is just going to be a gauntlet that my fourth place team is the historic wonders that everybody loves, the Wonderland team, the New York Yankees. I think the only reason I put this team in fourth place, are they a bad team? By no stretch of the imagination. Do they have as good of pitching as, as the other teams? Not necessarily, because let's see how good Tyone does. Let's see how good Severino does. I like both of them, but they haven't been the most consistent the last couple seasons because of injuries and other reasons. So let's see what they're able to do. Because what I like doesn't make a difference. It matters what they perform on the field. Michael King is another kid I like. 26 years old, developing, but what's he able to do on the field? That's all that matters, right? Not what, not what I like and see in a guy. But I do like what I see in his stuff and all that uh, hood spot. Catching, obviously they went more defensive oriented this season and got rid of um, Gary Sanchez. They still got Rizzo, Glaber Torres, DJ the Mayu, Connor Falaifa. We'll see what he's able to do in a pressure situation in New York. Marvin Gonzalez, Josh Donaldson was a great pickup for them. Their lineup's fine. The issue with them is health. Aaron Hicks is coming off of a key injury. Aaron Judge doesn't stay the healthiest. Giancarlo doesn't stay the healthiest. Uh, Josh Donaldson has been fairly healthy in his career, but has had moments of being banged up. So I would say the fact that this lineup ain't young, their issue with them is health. And I think the health concern is why, since this is projecting and you project things, having multiple reasons in your head, and trust me, there's more than the ones that I just offer as well. These videos would just be 85 hours long if I said all of them. That's kind of why I have the Yankees in fourth. Third place, I have the team that I love and adore in the AL East, my AL team, the Red Sox. So obviously, I'm not showing bias in this video, as I have the Red Sox in fourth or in third place, excuse me, because I think the Red Sox, similar to the Yankees, might not have the most depth-ridden pitching compared to the Blue Jays that are really good there, and the Rays that are probably a pitch-first team, but. They do have a lineup that doesn't, to me, bark injury concerns as the um, other than Trevor Story. But minus Trevor Story doesn't bark injury concerns to the Yankees lineup. Is Trevor Story a key pivotal piece? Yeah, but the Red Sox didn't have Trevor Story last year and were still baller as a lineup. So Rafael Devers, one of the best hard contact guys. Bobby Delbeck, great power hitter. Bogarts, great hitter. So I think this team's going to smack it around the yard. It's going to be, how does Tanner Ho continue to develop? Love the kid, think he's going to be good. He has to show that. Garrett Whitlock, how does he continue to do with his new contract? How does Pavetta continue to do in Boston now that his age 29 season? Hopefully he kind of skyrockets just like Evaldi kind of did at that age. And then how does Deepman continue to do at 35? Good start for him. Hopefully that continues. Cutter Crawford, pretty good rebound for him after um, not starting off too good in his first outing. Great rebound outing for him, so it's great to see a kid like that rebound. I just have more confidence in the health of the Boston Red Sox. I also think Matt Barnes is going to bounce back. Then I do the health, even throw Chapman into the health concerns of the Yankees, with the health of the Yankees. And that's why I have them in third. Now, these top two place teams that rhyme, the Jays and Rays, they are kind of a flip your coin and make a damn pick. Uh, because the Rays, to me... Obviously, just know how to pull all the right buttons. 
seemed, especially in the regular season. The playoffs, yeah, they have been beat each year by a better team, but one time in the World Series. Uh, and they started off a good again this year at 3-1. and one. I think I have them as the second place team just because, like usual, I'm kind of might be underestimating them because they're not as star studded where you have the Bichettes, you have the Guerreros, uh, you have the Barrios they picked up up there, Ryu and others. Gaussman went up north. So, I mean, they just have more eye popping name talent. But when you look at the, and that's why I have Toronto in first, so we can get that out of the way. And not just for that reason, but for the fact that they also made key additions the Blue Jays did this offseason to make their team even more stellar when they were already this juggernaut being built. But when it comes to the Rays, they're kind of this underrated juggernaut because they don't use a lot of pay. They did pay Wander Franco, which was kind of out of character for them, but a smart decision at the same time. Uh, Lowe is a good player. We'll see how Taylor Walls is able to do in their organization. It seems like one of those guys that is kind of a mix out of another organization guy, comes into the Rays, seems like a guy that might fit well with the Rays. They tend to figure those guys out, just like they did with G-Man Choi, as well as Diaz and others. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he can do, what Margo's able to do, what Phillips, making a great catch as a pitcher, is able to do. Hal Ramirez, who's more of a swing-the-stick guy than fielder. Hopefully, maybe he can get back to being a contact guy for them. I like this Rays team a lot, but I really like their pitching. Whistler, Thompson... Uh, Springs, Romero, Rasmussen, who's just going to continue to get better. Um, Romero's only 30, or 24, geez. Uh, Shane McGlanahan, who's underrated. Corey Kluber, who's the good Wiley veteran that they brought in. So I think that makes sense. Beaks moving to the bullpen, I think, is a good decision. So I think this team has the pitching. They're going to pitch well enough, and they're going to hit well enough, particularly because of low Franco, Yandy Diaz also mixing in there, and Jimin Choi being the mixing guys that have their days to really help the lineup, and then a Rosarina, um, hopefully Josh Lowe can take a next step for them, and you have that there, but they're a pitch first team, the reason I have the Blue Jays in first is they're kind of a great two-way team, smack it around the yard, bash it out to hell the baseball, um, the l lineup plus fantastic pitching. So I think those two things put together put the Blue Jays in first. The fact that the Rays are probably the second best pitching team in the division. Um, two also the Blue Jays that are the great two-way team. That puts them in second. The Red Sox being the healthier projected team in my eyes of the Yankees and Red Sox is a big reason that puts them in third. But also the fact that I think the Red Sox biggest key addition to a lineup that already was bashing it all around was Trevor Story, where you could argue the Yankees, yes, they got Aaron Hicks back, but they brought in Josh Donaldson, and now look how good Gary Sanchez is looking early in the Twins organization. They lost one power bat in the lineup, brought in another, so we'll see how that balances out for them in the end. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Obviously, the Orioles are in last place. Please can subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget. Love the Orioles and hope they're able to figure it out, though, because Camden Yards, top five of one of my favorite stadiums in the league. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below to help us grow to 230 or more by the end of the month. Really appreciate you guys' love and support this far. This has been the AL East season projection for how the division is going to finish.